Prasar Bharati, in collaboration with National Book Trust India, presents Story Lounge on All India Radio. Contrary to popular perception, reading habits are not on the wane due to multiple sources of information emerging on digital platforms. Yet, book publishing is on a downslide. This ultimately affects people who are on the wrong side of the digital divide and cannot afford new gadgets. To support them, Prasad Bharati and National Book Trust have come together to promote books over the radio, which is an affordable medium in the context of our socio-economic milieu. A bouquet of stories in Story Lounge. Today's episode is entitled Ramu and the Robo. Hello children, today I am going to tell you a story called Ramu and the Robo by Arun Sedwal. The illustrations have been done by Arya Praharaj and it has been published by National Book Trust. The story is set in the future where robos would do most of our jobs. So here it goes. Ramu's father was an old fashioned man. He did not believe in the idea of getting all work done by machines. He went out for long morning walks, exercised in the gymnasium and did all his work by himself. Therefore, Ramu had great difficulty in convincing his father to buy a robo for him. Almost all his friends owned these man-like machines. There was a robo in practically all the rooms of his school to attend to the teaching jobs of the teachers too. When Ramu urged that even in the 20th century people used to engage tutors to coach their children at home, Ramu's father finally agreed to buy a robo for him. They both went to a robo laboratory where Ramu selected the most sleek looking one which was also capable of solving complex sums of mathematics and algebra. Ramu was very happy now. He named the robo Rabu to rhyme with his own name. Ramu pressed a button and the robo started speaking. It was a history lesson. Ramu wondered how the 20th century man lived without a single robo like this one for the help. He pressed another button and Robo did his mathematics, translation and cosmology lessons. Gradually, Rabu started helping Ramu in most of his school and personal work. He had only to press some buttons and Rabu instantly did whatever Ramu ordered for. Ramu would often consult Rabu before doing anything. Which shirt should I wear? What should I eat? How should I spend the evening? What should I read? Whenever Ramu faced any problem, he would take the advice of Rabu. In a way... He had become completely dependent upon the robo. Seeing that Ramu was becoming too lazy, by not doing his own work, his father got worried. He told Ramu to reduce his dependency on the robo, but Ramu would not listen to him. Come final school examinations, and Ramu sat in the hall gazing and gasping. He did not know how to answer the questions. He was not allowed to bring Rabu for helping him in the examination papers. Ramu then realized that the robo had reduced him to a boy fit only for pressing the colored buttons. Ramu was not promoted to the next grade as his performance in the examination was very poor. He was very sad. But as was his habit, he asked Ramu, Why have I failed? Because you did not solve the questions correctly, Ramu replied. What should I do now? Ramu asked desperately. Sell off the robo and try to learn the lessons yourself. It is still not too late, Rabu said with mischievous spark in his green, in the green lenses of its eyes. Ramu could not ignore Rabu's advice and next morning, quite against his wish, he sent an advertisement requesting in the tele news, Robo for immediate sale. Robo can act as a good teacher and perform all kinds of jobs. Nobody came to purchase his Robo. Ramu knew it was difficult to sell an old machine, so he placed Ramu in a junk room. His father was out for a week-long trip to an underground factory near the South Pole. When he returned, he found that Ramu, who used to open the door, was nowhere around, and Ramu was sulking and sitting in his chair. What has gone wrong, Ramu dear? his father inquired. Ramu did not reply for a while. Then, after a while, he said, I have failed in my examination. His father said, Don't worry about your failure in the examination. There is always a next time when you can do better. And do not sell your Rabu. As a matter of fact, you can't sell it 
because there won't be any buyers for old machines but your birthday is coming and you could reprogram him to serve snacks and eatables and drinks to your friends go to the junk room and retrieve rabu you need not reactivate all the programs but only a few manual functions and the batteries this will prevent it from teaching you and you will be forced to use your own brain for learning if you are unable to do it i will send it to the robo laboratory and get it reprogrammed ramu's father got up and went to his room patting ramu on the back with affection ramu went to the junk room to retrieve his robo rabu was standing motionless in the corner where it was kept ramu looked at the panel of various control buttons to reset the program and pressed a few buttons he heard a strange noise from the belly of the machine all of a sudden the robo started moving its arms in a strange way its eyes started flashing brightly soon ramu realized that something had gone wrong he looked up and saw a few big rats coming out from the air pulling hole in the robo's right shoulder it was clear that the rats had disturbed the internal wiring of the robo he immediately bolted the door of the junk room and rushed to his father gasping for breath ramu narrated to his father the strange changes in rabu suddenly he heard a crashing sound it came from the direction of the junk room run dad rabu has broken the junk room door his father stepped aside but was thrown on the ground with a violent sweep of rabu's hand oh dad oh dad ramu cried and ran to his father but that by that time his father had got up and said don't cry i am not hurt but where is rabu i saw him entering your room but the robo could not be seen nor could any sound be heard from the room which it had entered within a few minutes three officials of robotics department came in a special vehicle ramu's father told those men to look for the robo in his room all were surprised by its absence from the room where it had entered only a short while ago it had gone away 48 hours had passed but no information was received from rabu ramu's father had to go out of the town to look after his business for a few weeks he wanted to take ramu with him as he was worried that the mad robo might turn up some day create mischief or even harm ramu although the staff from robotics department had assured that the robo was not likely to return as it might have either gone very far or would have destroyed itself however ramu's father was not free from apprehension the city police had also been alerted but they too had no clue about the whereabouts of rabu ramu's birthday was not far now he wanted to stay at home and celebrate his birthday with his friends so his father left after giving instructions to the city police as well as the robotics department for the safety of ramu ramu often thought about rabu he did not like the idea of rabu being destroyed he wished him to be retrieved and repaired he wanted to keep it in his room even though it might not be of any use ramu decided to go out in search of rabu ramu thought of going to one of his friends so that both could search for the robo together his friend's place was quite far ramu had to drive through a patch of deserted area that was preserved as a natural forest there were some very old monuments in this forest huge dilapidated buildings mostly made of grey stones ramu heard a weak pip 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 sound from his console box which lay in his pocket he pulled himself out of the car he was in and took out the console box from his pocket he slowly stepped forward in the direction of those massive ruins with courage and determination as soon as he went a few steps further ramu again heard a very weak pip pip sound from the box and the contact light flashed ramu was thrilled ramu started moving forward again taking slow steps soon he was standing at the magnificent gate of one of those ruins he gathered courage and peeped inside the gate rabu was there ramu saw that rabu's hands and fingers were damaged and had become crooked his right eye socket had cracked both his eyes however were bright red then rabu took one step forward and stood exactly face to face with ramu he pounced upon ramu but he lost his balance and he fell rabu's head got detached from his body due to the impact of the fall it was lying flat and no longer showed signs of any movement ramu felt sorry for his friend rabu he spent some time in wondered whether a robo could be a man's best friend or the worst enemy he believed that a robo could be a man's best friend if used wisely otherwise it can be dangerous 
a thought also flashed in Ramu's mind that even man could be quite as unpredictable as a robo and as dangerous too. You were listening to Story Lounge, produced by the World Service of All India Radio, on behalf of Prasad Bharati, in association with the National Book Trust, India. Story Lounge comes to you every day, same time, same channel.